if you want to see all the one all the 100 of videos I made for you you go to genesispc.com click on the videos on YouTube and you will see that I have something about Excel in general about Excel VBA about access in general access VBA and VB script and you will see an enormous listing of videos that you can just click on and train yourself to become a professional sometimes your sheets update every day or every week or whatever and you want to keep copies of it print them out and keep PDF files of it that you can distribute to whomever you want to so in this case I have three or four sheets so I'm going to print them out and uh, also as a PDF file I do that with a shortcut Control shift P says how many printed copies of each sheet do you want by default I say one it says do you also want the PDF file of each one I'm going to say no for now so it's uh, it gives me a print preview and I'm closing that one and then the second sheet and the third sheet and the fourth sheet if you want to usually you want to print them really out I'm just doing print preview because I can't show you the printout anyway on this video and then we also make a PDF file of each one so how do we do that we go to Microsoft Visual Basic Alt F11 and then because I uh, I keep doing this day after day and, each, and I close Excel in between etc I need to remember what the last copy was so uh, we do that with a number and because I need to remember that we put in a public variable before any subroutine or before any function and that public variable is an integer so I can use it and save it later on and the next time we open Excel or this file it will remember what the latest counter was then we declare a new subroutine I call it print sheet and I attach the shortcut to it Control shift P we need variables to begin with then we bring up I that it still remembers from the previous time I will show you how that is possible by adding one to the existing one then I take from the active workbook the path and I store that in string variable as path then I ask with an input box how many copies do you want by default comma comma one so that argument is the default one so don't do the second one for that is the title of the input box if you want that go ahead we store that in n the variable n is of the integer type then we ask with a message box that has a yes no combination of buttons if the user chooses yes then set the boolean variable that is either true or false to true by default it was already false and then we are going to loop through all the worksheets for the collection of worksheets with a for each loop I use the variable OWS which is of the worksheet type in the collection of worksheet take from OWS the page setup center header the name of the active workbook then in the center footer let's say we want the name of that specific sheet so the first time it is the first sheet, the second time the second sheet, etc. OWS.name and we do a print preview. If you really do this on your machine, you want the printout instead. So then you would probably make the print preview optional or comment it out and you would comment that one back in. If you do that, use print out and the third argument so space comma space comma space how many copies do you want and that is n correct because n was what the user had through the input box so I'm doing redoing that then if the boolean PDF was set to true which happened here if you chose that as a user then we store in S file the full name of the path of this workbook space ampersand space and then a literal backslash 
space ampersand space OWS OWS dot name space ampersand and then the number that the machine remembers so far space ampersand and then double quotes dot PDF double quotes if that file does exist already that means if the dir function based on that path does not return an empty string then we tell the user the existing file will be overwritten you could give them a choice there whether they want that or not but I leave that up to you and then we use a very simple procedure ows.export as fixed format and the first argument is space the type Excel type PDF comma and the file name is as file close your if statement close the loop with a next OWS and do end sub so all we have to add now is we have to save I when the workbook closes the machine will not remember next time what I was I will be reset each time you open this unless you save I somehow and we do that when the workbook closes in the left panel double click on this workbook and then you make sure that you are in workbook and then you choose one of these events I do before close and then later on open okay before close we use procedure save setting it actually saves that in the registry but you probably don't care about that space and then it says what is the application name as a string active workbook dot name comma in which section do you want to store it I happen to call that numbers double quotes numbers double quotes but anything you want and then the third argument is what is this the key I happen to call it counter and what do you set it I remember that I was a public variable so I can call it here otherwise you could never call it in a completely different section of your project and then when the workbook opens we are going to get the setting that we had stored when the, the workbook closed we store that in I I don't have to declare I because it's already a public variable get setting open parentheses it's a function now and you want the application name active workbook dot name in which section is it the section numbers in which key of that section numbers you can have several in numbers I have only the counter you could say the average or whatever you want to do and then please retrieve that I so now we should be able to run all of this so if I do control shift P again it will ask how many copies this time I'm going to add a PDF file first it, it goes through all the print previews unless you had commented that out then it will just print everything out and now it is creating PDF files and it did that in the folder where I had everything stored so when I go to the folder now you will see that there is from the sheet more year sales etc salaries seniority I had already done that one time before to test the thing so I am now in number two but that would have been one if you really want to start that one how would you fix that by the way if I open uh, seniority number two then you will get a PDF file that looks like this it says on top print sheets etc and it's the sheet seniority and believe me the other three have the same kind of looks so how did we get all of that I have to do one more thing have if you want to start renumbering place at the very beginning of the sub this line if message box start numbering files with a yes no option if it's VB yes then set I to zero what you can also do 
is to set i to 0 with the immediate window. Let me show you that one time. So when I go to view immediate window that allows you to communicate with the system. If I ask now what i is, question mark i, and I enter, it tells me it's 2. And I'm going to set it to 0. So when it runs the subroutine, it adds 1 and it does everything that way. So I'm going to set i equals 0 and I enter it. So now i is 0. If you don't believe it, I'm going to ask it. And i is 0. So now when I run this procedure again, so now when I do control shift p how many printed copies of each is let's say one we also want the pdf file so i can guarantee you that that pdf file is now number one if i go back to my list here then you see there is number one if i do it again then it will automatically go into two and it will tell me we will override two and then it goes into three etc 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 want to make sure that it remembers everything. So I'm going to close this Excel file. Save it of course, otherwise it will not save that I number. And I'm running it again. It opens it now, it will automatically remember that that was number 1, so it will create number 2. Control Shift P. We want the PDF file. And it tells me the existing file will be for we have already a two, remember? So it will do all of that. The annoying thing is now it keeps repeating that information. So now when we go back to the thing, then we will see that number two is now the most recent one. You uh, you need to know much more. If you want to use VBA very professionally, I would recommend that you buy this CD-ROM. It has more than, than 1,500 slides and they are interactive. It will ask you questions and depending on what you have learned, if you answer those questions correctly, it will take you to the next slide, etc. This is what you will find in there. You can buy this from genesispc.com, that is from mrexcel.com or from amazon.com.